welcome back to Good Evening KU. I'm Orly Krugel. And I'm Katie Payne. And what a weekend it was here in Lawrence, Kansas. Yeah, exciting stuff going on with KU football. First win over Oklahoma since 1997. Ranked opponent, right. top 10. Yeah, it's that's pretty longer than I've stuff. been alive. Yeah, we won <laughs> Cheese It Bowl of the Week, and Coach Leipold also won Coach of the Week. Coach so that's week. pretty exciting for the program. and the football team and the yeah. progress that it's going. How was your weekend at the football game? It was cold. I was there all day mm -hmm. um, through the w rain delay. Right, right. Very chilly, but it was so fun to be there at the end yeah, of the game. Yeah, you're glad you were there. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah, I didn't even know that um, throwing the goalpost in the lake was like a thing. Like, I think that started last really? year. Yeah. I guess, yeah, I had no idea about that until I saw it everywhere. It was like a big deal, but. Well, last yeah. year we stormed the field when we became bowl eligible. Okay, and yeah, that's yeah. when they stole the goalpost. So I think it was just like, oh, right. we're bowl eligible, great win. Yeah, throw the goalpost in the Yeah, lake again. well, that's cool. I mean, I feel bad for whoever has to clean it up, but. Uh. Well, it looks like during the game that a lot of the student section mm -hmm. left during the rain delay, and I think they were allowed back in because. Oh towards the end of the fourth quarter and even the storming of the field, there were a lot more students and fans back in the okay. stadium. Yeah, maybe they changed their minds. So yeah, you should have come back. I, yeah, I, I was nuzzled in my bed, man. <laughs> um, we also, it was also Halloween weekend. It's not, Halloween's tomorrow actually, but it feels like it's already over in my mind. Well, typical college <laughs> town, you know, right, right, going right. out all weekend. Yeah. What were you for Halloween? I was Lady Bird from the movie Lady Bird. N literally no one knew what I was, and it was, like, really sad. I, and you said you've never seen Lady Bird. Well, that's what makes your costume special is that no one else yeah. is doing it. Did not see a single other Lady Bird. I was, you know, unique in that sense. But And then the second night, I was Snooky. So, that's a good costume. Yeah, and I saw, like, three other Snookies. And, like, you know, when you see a Snooky, you know, like, we knew. It, it was mutual, so... I mean, you saw a lot of <laughs> typical. Yeah, I'm trying to think. What are the most like costumes. common costumes? Um, Dorothy. Was Dorothy a big was one. big this year. Yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't really mm -hmm. care too much about yeah. Halloween weekend this year. The first night, I was a robber. <laughs> um, kind of just threw some things together yeah. and made a costume That's work. The it's the college life. And Saturday night, I was a go-go girl. So oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it was fun. that's a classic costume. I feel like. I saw a lot of referees. Mm -hmm. That's just, you know, what guys do when they don't want to try. Um, <laughs> I heard a lot of whistles blowing. I was like, all right, enough of that. <laughs> yeah. So but daylight savings is yeah. this week. I, I guess, you know, I will be happy about the extra hour of sleep, but something about it getting dark before five, like, man, it really just depresses me sometimes. And if you don't close your blinds, you're going to be yeah. waking up at like 7 a.m. Yeah. I, I don't know. I like to see the sunrise, but I don't, I love I don't usually wake up at sleep, 7. So. Right. It works out for everyone. But typically, I sleep later when it's darker yeah. out. So. Do you have super early classes? Um, yes, but I work what for do the you football consider team, super so early? I'm up at okay. 6 a.m. every morning anyway. So. Right. But I like to schedule 8 a.m. on days okay. when I don't have football. So. Yeah. It's crazy. I'm, an, I'm a morning person. I cannot do that. My... <laughs> My roommate has a bunch of 8 a.m.s, and I mean, I have a couple 9 a.m.s, but even like that extra hour of sleep, like I always need that. I like to be done early. So yeah, just that is nice. Go home, fall to asleep by 10 o'clock. It's yeah. perfect. It's perfect. I know. I, I fell asleep at like 9 o'clock last night, and I naturally woke up at like 6, and I was like, I don't know what's wrong with me, but yeah. I, my body's not used to that. And with this cold weather, <laughs> it just makes you want to bundle up yeah. and lay under your blankets no, all day. No, for real bed rot again yeah. yes that's all all we do in college Sunday yeah. Sundays for bed rotting yeah. Sunday you don't come out of your bed at all <laughs> yeah well after our break our guest is Dulce and she's interviewing her sister who works for MGM Grand and will share her story
three days later. Oh, well, welcome. Oma, I do have um, welcome to Good Evening KU. Aside from being such a great sister, you also do something I believe a lot of people would be interested in. You're part of a great team that runs worldwide, that is worldwide known, um, Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, MGM Grand. Welcome. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, your property hosts several uh, resident entertainers, such as world-renowned magician David Copperfield, Cobb by Cirque du Soleil, entertainer Brad Garrett, who is famous for movies such as Finding Nemo and Ratatouille, as well as a dancing team winner, Java Walkies. What is the most exciting part of hosting these famous people in your venue? Well, um, there's a lot of great things that come alongside it. I think one of them is just getting to work directly with those artists, you know, kind of, you can be star shocked sometimes, you know, I can just be running an email and suddenly Brad Garrett calls me or David Copperfield comes into my office and, you know, you just have these people right next to you. Somebody that was Eeyore for um, Winnie the Pooh and they're just <laughs> in there talking to you, like just normal people requesting things from you. So it's really exciting to just kind of have that daily interaction with them and have those, that relationship just so direct and so close. That's awesome. There has been a lot of controversy recently over a video that went viral of recent college graduates being frustrated uh, since they're not urging, earning six digit salaries right after college. What advice would you give them since you yourself climbed the ladder? Well, um, I think education is important. Um, it definitely will help open up doors a lot quicker. Um, but I think it's also important to understand that Knowledge is important, but applied knowledge is more important, which is why internships are really important as well. It helps open up those doors quicker when you start off from the bottom, start gaining that experience. Myself, you know, starting from an agent, now being in management, I know what my agents need. I know where, where they're coming from, where they might be lacking, and I wouldn't have gotten that had I gone directly into management without starting at that lower level. Definitely, so intern. Yes, <laughs> and we, like MGM will always hire from within, and that's the one way that you can climb the ladder, and yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I think a lot of business and marketing majors would like to know what a daily day is like. Can you give us some information about what your tasks are? Um, I know some of it does involve some reports. Yes, a lot of reports. <laughs> <laughs> a lot, a lot of reports. And there's not a typical day in the industry. Entertainment changes rapidly. And one moment we might have a show going, and the next moment there's an issue with the stage, and now we have to cancel or we have to work around it. So we work a lot with reports and communicating what the sales are like to our partners, to the shows. Um, the promoters, seeing if we need to activate any discounts for any wholesales. If it's not selling that well, maybe it's a slow weekend or anything like that. We need to open up seats or dress the room. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, many people would like to break into the entertainment or music industry. Can you give us some back of the house details of what goes on helping concerts, uh, helping host concerts and award shows such as the Latin Grammys? Yeah, there's a lot. Um, I obviously work more on the ticketing side, but there's a lot of different um, areas that you can explore. We have a really amazing agent with us right now that she's been able to network with then starting um, at the box office. And now she has the connections to potentially start touring with groups now. So there's a lot of different areas that you can go into. Again, starting from the bottom, we'll open up those doors, networking with those people. Definitely. I mean, I know it takes a village. <laughs> yeah, it takes a village. Yeah. Definitely. I know some people that used to work for personal assistant for David Copperfield, and now they're actually personal assistant for Ch uh, Ch Childish Gambino. Is that his name? Childish Gambino. Childish Gambino. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now she's like touring all over the country and the world. And I think that's really awesome is definitely get your foot in there. Yeah. Many. And then uh, you have been awarded employee of the quarter. Congratulations. Earlier this past <laughs> spring and have been given several gifts by your division. What is a thing that has made you passionate? about conti uh, to continue to strive for greatness well I love free things um, <laughs> <laughs> so I love these gifts but <laughs> in all honesty uh, I think that the people around you is very important um, I have an amazing boss he pushes me past my comfort zones and once you have people like that it, it, it makes you want to grow it makes you want to keep pushing to prove them right to prove them that yeah you are supporting someone that is gonna accomplish the goals that you have for them 
And not only that, I want to be good for my team as well. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And then I did see on uh, David Copperfield's Instagram story that he's trying to make the, wor <laughs> the moon disappear. Is that yes. correct? In February yes. 2024. Do you know of anything that's going on with that? I can't reveal anything. You guys are going to have to stay tuned and see the moon disappear. Non-disclosure agreement. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alma, thank you so much for coming on. I think one last thing everybody would love to know is who is a celebrity or celebrity team that you have gotten the chance to interact with that has impacted your experience? And was it a good or a bad one? It was a great one. Um, I would say Canelo and his team. Um, he is an amazing boxer. He just won his last fight too, but he, in his last fight at the Grand Garden Arena, he, his team has always been super respectful when coming in, checking his numbers, seeing if we need to open up more seats. He's selling really good, seeing where we can open, where we can't, where there's limited view, where we can discount some seats. And they've always been super respectful. He was giving out merch at the time for with any ticket sale, whether you were buying to support him or the opponent, he was mm. still giving out that merch. And but. He didn't have to give as to us, but he said a separate allotment just for us, just for the box office. And I think that's really cool when they take care of the team that's helping them. I yeah. think that's also like really nice because I think a lot of celebrities are so used to being catered to and it's nice when they still have a little piece of yeah. humanity in them <laughs> yeah. and they're still catering towards their team, uh, you know, so that's really lovely. I know Brad is also your favorite. Can you I love Brad. <laughs> Brad, Brad is amazing. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's one of the best. He's one of the best. He's hilarious. You, you have to be someone that doesn't get offended easily because his comedy is, is not for the weak of heart, but he's, he's amazing. He always comes into the box office. He's always very grateful for everything we do for his team and he's he's just great oh, he always awesome. gives us like free merch and snacks and anything <laughs> he can <laughs> just to show his gratitude and when people show their gratitude like that it, you know we want to push more to help him with his sales. Definitely, you you want to work for him. Exactly, you I do. For me. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> well, Oma, thank you so much for coming on. If you're interested in dipping your foot in the entertainment industry, you can apply to intern. It is offered to juniors and seniors who are interested in areas such as casino marketing, hotel operations, food and beverage, management associate, and many, many more. You can learn more information by going to careers.mgmresorts.com. Uh, we will take a short break and we'll be back with some news. Welcome back, I'm Cade. And I'm Caden. This is your Monday Good Evening KU News Update. The war in the Middle East continues with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu telling the world that it won't end until Hamas is destroyed. Israel sent ground troops into the northern part of Gaza into what is being called Phase 2 of the operation. According to BBC News, thousands of people have broken into aid depots in Gaza and get basic supplies like flour and soap. Former U.S. Vice President Mike Pence has withdrawn his name from the 2024 presidential race. Citing a lack of both funds and support from the Republican voters, Pence said that while he was leaving the campaign, he would still fight for conservative values. The body of the man suspected of killing 18 people in a main shooting spree was discovered on Friday at a recycling facility where he had worked. Robert Card was found dead in the parking lot from his self-apparent, self-inflicted gunshot wounds. Card's sister-in-law said that Robert began hearing voices and thought it was from people talking about him. A Lawrence man was arrested early Sunday morning after brandishing a knife toward police officers responding to a disturbance at the Tamarind Apartments at 15th and Iowa Streets. According to the LJ World, officers tased and allegedly intoxicated Timothy Faust after Faust had kicked in the door of a neighbor's apartment. No one was seriously injured in the incident. Sadly, actor Matthew Perry, known to most of us as Chandler Bing from the TV series Friends, died on Saturday evening in Los Angeles. Media, media outlets have been reporting that Perry was found unresponsive in his hot tub after playing pickleball earlier in the day. Perry was 54 years old. With Saturday's victory over Oklahoma, the KU football team is back in the rankings. The Jayhawks are number 22 in the Associated Press poll and number 23 in the USA Today coaches poll. For more on the game, here's Tyler. Thanks, Kate. And yes, 
The football team pulled off one of the biggest victories in school history on Saturday as the Jayhawks upset the previously defeated Oklahoma Sooners 38-33 at the booth. Devin Neal scored a nine-yard touchdown run with just over one minute left, and then the defense held on for the win by forcing an incomplete pass in the end, in the end zone on the final play of the game. After the game, students stormed the field and tore down the south goalpost, which eventually ended up in Potter Lake. In the post-game press conference, Coach Leipold said that he was especially happy for quarterback Jason Bean, who has, come, who has overcome a lot of adversity. I'm happy and, and probably pulling for Jason in ways that I, I don't always because he's been unselfish. He, he could have left like a lot of guys do today in college football. A lot of things. He's been through a lot of ups and downs, and uh, he just keeps coming back. And even, even in the fourth quarter, or, you know, he throws, throws the interception. And, uh, you know, there's some things there, but he just kept fighting. And uh, that's all we can ask for him. And uh, to see him make some plays like he did today, I thought was really special. Bean, who rushed for thir a 38-yard touchdown, said it was a team effort. You know, like I said, like I just told y'all, I've been through so much. And, you know, for this team to have my back like they do and, um, you know, for them to allow me to come back and, and be a part of this team this year is, um, you know, it's just kind of what I said to him. And uh, first of all, I wanted to thank them, um, you know, because without them, I wouldn't be here. And, um, you know, I think that's the main thing is that, you know, I'm just proud to be in, the, in this situation. With the win, KU is now bowl eligible for the second year in a row. The Jayhawks are 6-2 and two overall and 3-2 and two in the Big 12 Conference. They'll travel to Iowa State this weekend for a 6 p.m. kickoff against the Cyclones. And that game will be televised on ESPN. The volleyball team swept West Virginia last weekend to raise its record to 16-4 overall and 7-3 in the Big 12. The Jayhawks are now in third place in the conference and have also moved up to number 14 in the polls. Next up is the Dillon Sunflower Showdown against K-State on Friday and Saturday. Kansas State is on a roll sweeping number 8 BYU this weekend. The first serve on Friday is at 6.30 in the Horsch Family Arena. The cross-country teams both finished in sixth place at the Big 12 Conference Championship this weekend in Ames, Iowa. Senior Chandler Gibbons placed 11th overall, which earned him an all Big 12 selection. On the women's side, senior Lona uh, Letamaya and junior Kennedy Kruger finished 35th and 36th overall as KU's top placers. The NCAA Mid Midwest Regional is next up for the Jayhawks on November 10th. Finally, the men's and women's basketball seasons are underway. The men lost an exhibition game against Illinois yesterday in Champaign. The game was a fundraiser for the victims of the deadly fires in Hawaii earlier this year and raised over $1 million. Next up will be another exhibition game against Fort Hayes State on Wednesday. Tip-off is at 7 p.m. in Allen Fieldhouse. The women's regular season begins the following Wednesday, November 8th, in Allen Fieldhouse against Northwestern State. Turning to the pros, today is the 30th sports equinox in our history. This means that there are games from the MLB, NFL, NBA, and NHL on the same day. The MLB has Game 3 of the World Series, the NFL has Monday Night Football, and the NHL and NBA have over 10 games on their schedule today. It's a great day for sports fans. Speaking of the World Series, after the Texas Rangers emerged victorious in a Game 1 thriller, the Arizona Diamondbacks took care of business in a 9-1 route in Game 2 on Saturday. Diamondback starter Merrill Kelly held the Rangers to one run on three hits and seven innings of work. The Diamondbacks' offense exploded for seven runs in the last three innings that game. The pitching matchup for Game 3 is the veteran Max Scherzer for Texas and rookie Brandon Pafat for Arizona. First pitch is at 7 p.m. The Kansas City Chiefs were stunned by the Broncos in Denver in a 24-9 ball game. Patrick Mahomes had his worst game of the season, throwing two picks and, two, and for 241 yards. The Chiefs did not score a touchdown in this game. The once 5-0 49ers have lost three straight games with a 31-17 loss to the Bengals on Sunday. After putting up at least 30 points in their first five games, the Niners have scored 17 points in each of their losses. That's all for sports. After the break, Dulcie will be back with the weather. Miss the bus again? Yeah. You should download my bus, Lawrence. You can see when buses are arriving here, and you can also see where the buses are in Lawrence. Wow, okay. Download the My Bus Lawrence app today.
Good afternoon. Welcome back to your weather here at KU. Right now, we are currently looking at the background of Lawrence. <laughs> Sorry about that. We are currently looking at the background of Lawrence. We have sunny skies now, which is definitely awesome. The clouds are nowhere near us. We did have them for around a week for us. As you can see right now in our plains, we are currently all in the 40s, except for Kansas City. It is a little bit more hotter. We're up in 45 there. For our current conditions, it is sunny with a high near 42 and wind is coming from the west side of around 10 miles per hour. For tonight, it is going to be a little bit cold. It'll get down to around uh, low, as low as around 27 degrees. And then, as you can see, for our hourly plan are 42, 35, 30, and 25. And our current satellite. Now, as we can see right here upwards, there is a cold front that's coming down from Canada, and it's sweeping through the whole nation. And it seems like a lot of meteorologists are actually saying that this is going to be the coldest Halloween in 100 years. Uh, so that's definitely crazy. I know for Illinois, they're already making a record. And up here, there might be a little bit of snow. The only parts of the country that they are going to have a good Halloween is going to be uh, by California and by Florida, where it is going to be warm. But for the rest of the, the uh, states, it seems like it is going to be very, very cold. Even Las Vegas, uh, they, are, they did dip around 60 degrees for tomorrow. As you can see for tomorrow's forecast, sunny with a high near 40 degrees, light wind as well. And our extended forecast, uh, it is going to be a little bit warmer at the end of the week. With those clouds rolling in, a lot of moisture will be coming in and increasing our temperature. So we'll be warming up a little bit more. And that is all for us here at Good Evening KU. For tomorrow, our show will be airing at around 5.30. Have a good Halloween and we'll see you there.